Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. In this video, we're just taking a look at a couple of compact handheld GPS devices that we stock with colour screens and options for Ordnance Survey maps. We're looking at these two units side by side because they're very similar in size, weight and price. So on the left hand side, we've got the Garmin eTrex 32X. This is a full button control unit, no touch screen, colour screen, and we've got the Ordnance Survey 1 to 50 map card loaded in the unit. On the right hand side, we've got the 2Nav Rock device, the ROC Rock device. This has button control, but it also has touch screen as well. One of the main differences between the two, other than the fact that the eTrex 32X from Garmin is purely button control, is that the eTrex 32X is powered by two AA batteries that you put into the back of the unit by taking the back off and you put your own AA batteries in, whereas the Rock unit from 2Nav, it has a built-in lithium rechargeable battery, so there's no battery to take out and replace. Other than that, a lot of things are very similar regarding sizes and weight, so I'm just going to cover that first. So both units have the Ordnance Survey 1 to 50 map installed, and both units we've set the map as north up, so it's easier to see when you're comparing them side by side. Both units we can have the map as what we call track up, so it points the way you're heading, and even when you're stationary, because both units have an electronic compass, the map will line up when you're standing still. So we start with the eTrex 32X on the left. It has a weight of 141.7 grams with the two AA batteries. The rock is slightly lighter at 120 grams with the built-in battery. Dimensionally, very similar. The eTrex 32X on the left is 5.4 centimeters wide, 10.3 centimeters tall, and has a depth of 3.3 centimeters. The rock unit on the right hand side has a 5.8 centimetre width, so just ever so slightly wider, 9 centimetres tall, so just a little bit less in height, a little bit shallower at 2 centimetres, but it does have on the back, it just adds a few millimetre, a quick lock attachment that allows you to attach bike mounts, a backpack tether and a carabiner clip with the kit that we sell. The Garmin unit has the spine on the back that allows you to attach various attachments from Garmin, including a backpack tether and a bicycle mount. So very similar in size. Just going to look at the screens because we have got slightly different sizes on the screens. The eTrex 32 on the left has a 2.2 inch across the diagonal of 5.6 centimetres. The 2NAV has a bigger screen at 2.7 centimetres diagonal or 6.9 centimetres. I should have said 2.7 inches, sorry, 6.9 centimetres. So slightly bigger. I have got some toolbars shown top and bottom, but we can on the 2NAV make the screen a little bit bigger there. So we've got it at full size. Now regarding brightness, we are finding the 2NAV is a little bit of a brighter screen. I've actually got the 2NAV set at 50% backlight, so I'll just actually show you that now. On the backlight setting, you'll see there, it's set at 50%, but actually on the Garmin unit, I do have this one set at 100% backlight. Bear in mind, we are inside at the moment. You'll find both of the units when you go outside. The Garmin unit, when the sun's shining on the screen, it really brightens it up and brings it to life. And the 2Nav unit is brilliant as well. When you're outside in the sun, there's no problems, but you do have a bit more adjustment with regards to backlight and making it brighter when it's a duller day. So slightly bigger screen on the 2Nav. Pixel-wise, they're both exactly the same, 240 by 320 pixels. But I think on the brighter screen we can see on the 2Nav, I think the colours are just a little bit more defined. I will zoom in and out on the map and show you what the map looks like so you can compare when we're zoomed in closer or zoomed out. Battery life then, with the eTrex 32X, is going to depend very much on the quality of AA batteries you put in. Both manufacturers base battery life on recording at GPS only. So if we're recording GPS only on the eTrex 32X, you can potentially achieve 25 hours if you've got a really good set of batteries. That's good quality, high-end batteries. It will depend on temperatures, how often you have the screen on. 
With the two nav unit, they always base their battery figures on the screen being on all the time at 50% backlight, which is what I've got now. GPS recording only, you're going to achieve 18 hours. In our testing, I have achieved over 20 hours using GPS Beidou and Galileo and again with the e-trex we've had good figures you know we have been close to the 25 hours we're a really good set of batteries but it will depend very much on the Garmin how much the screen's on we find having the screen go off when you're not using it does give you um, those more achievable figures that Garmin quote but at the end of the day with the e-trex 32x you do have the advantage to carry spare AA batteries whereas with the two nav not having um, batteries you put in yourself you would be looking at carrying something like a battery pack for emergency but I'm sure everyone will agree for going out for a long day's hike both of the units are going to achieve the battery required for a full day's long hike. Now regarding satellites so we mentioned the battery life figures are quoted using GPS only with the eTrex 32X, you've either got the choice of locking onto GPS satellites, or if you want to lock onto more satellites, potentially increasing accuracy and speed of fix, we've got the option of GPS and GLONASS. Bit more flexibility with the two nav. We can have GPS, Galileo, and GLONASS. We've also got Beidou. You can put three of those on at any one time. We've actually got the unit set at the moment as GPS, Galileo, and Beidou and even though we're inside if I actually look at the accuracy by going to the satellite screen it will give you an idea of what accuracy we've got inside we're sitting at the moment at five foot accuracy I have got a skylight not very far away from me at the moment if I go onto the Garmin unit I'm just going to get to the satellite screen at the minute it's showing an accuracy of 32 feet but when we go outside with the units, that is, of course, going to improve. And you will see there's not as much difference when we're outside. Um, normally, we find with the eTrex 32X, we sit around sort of 12 foot accuracy, occasionally down to 10 foot. With the two nav, it does tend to sit around the five foot with a clear view of the sky. It can jump up to a similar figure to the eTrex 32X, which has actually just went to 10 foot there. But bear in mind, we are inside at the moment with the units. So I'm just going to use the back button on the two nav just to get back to the map. Just We have got some button control. And on the Garmin, I've got a back button and I've set it to scroll between different screens. So I'm back on the map now. So that is about the satellite. Both of them I mentioned have got an electronic compass. So when you're stationary, that compass helps line it up. I've got these both set in north up, but in the middle of the screen, we've got a red pointer here on the two nav, which tells me it's this direction I'm pointing on the map, which is correct. I'm pointing down the road, um, just because I've got it set in north up at the minute. And on the Garmin, we've got the little blue triangle as a position indicator. So they both have an electronic compass and they both have a barometric altimeter and they're both rated to an IPX7 rating so no problem being out in the rain with both of the units. So I'm just going to look at some of the maybe disadvantages, advantages why you might go for one over the other. Um, if we start with the Garmin unit, the eTrex 32X, it's always been very popular for someone who maybe doesn't want a touch screen. They want full button control. So we've got buttons that we use. We can set these buttons to scroll between different screens by setting up menus. It's got a joystick that we use to move the map. So we move the map up by using the joystick. It can just take a little bit to render, but as you're walking, you will find that a little bit quicker than trying to move it a big distance ahead. But we do have joystick control and a back button that takes the map back to where we are. If we want to zoom in with the eTrex, we've got buttons on the side that let us zoom in. And I'll just zoom this one out a little bit because we're going to compare it to the two nav. So it's purely button control, a button that takes us to the main menu as well. And then again, I'm just going to come back out of there with the back button. So purely button control. And also with the eTrex, it takes AA batteries. So someone who prefers to carry their own batteries and know they can put batteries in at any time, carry spares, great advantage. Um, the maps that come on the eTrex come in a micro SD card. When we supply it, that goes in the back of the unit. So the maps are already on the unit if you buy it from us with the Ordnance Survey 1 to 50 option so they're really the advantages we're looking at full button control if you don't want a touchscreen unit you can do everything via the buttons and it's AA batteries and it's nice lightweight compact robust unit 
I'm now going to go to the two nav unit. Now at the moment, price-wise, there's not a lot of difference between them. If we're comparing them with a 1 to 50 full GB map, the two nav comes in at £40 more at the moment. But what you'll find is we we'll have got some extra features with the two nav. If, you, if you're not too concerned about not having the AA batteries and you're happy with that built-in lithium-ion battery, which we are achieving the 18 hours battery and more, on a recent trip where I took the unit out, I'd actually, on five and a half hours, I used 25% battery, and that was with GLONASS, Beardu, sorry, I should say Galileo, Beardu and GPS all turned on and the backlight at 50%. So based on that, I'm going to achieve over 20 hours. So I was pretty pleased with that. So the other advantages are some people prefer a touchscreen. I find the touchscreen moves a lot quicker than the joystick control on the actual Garmin. So I'm finding that map there, if you see me moving around, whereas with the joystick, I find I've got to get the joystick right at the top of the map and it's just a little bit more jumpy moving. So I do find the two nav's got a faster processor. The other thing you've probably noticed, if I just put these both back to where we are at the minute, and I'm actually just going to zoom out. So we do have button control on the two nav there. I've actually got minus and plus on the side. We do have a plus and minus on the touch screen as well to zoom in and out. Just put this back to full screen. I find it's a brighter screen and the colours are more defined on the map. So it looks like it's got a higher colour count on the two nav. So I think the maps just do look a little bit better. They are raster maps, so we do lose a bit of clarity when we zoom in, zoom in which you can probably see. I'll just zoom in. So I just hit the back button. I'll just zoom in a little bit closer on the Garmin, if I go the right way, just to get it to a similar level that we've got on the two nav. So you do, when you zoom in really close, lose a little bit of clarity, but I think we've just got that teeny little bit of extra sharpness and just with the more defined colours, I think on the two nav on the right hand side. Um, so again, that's one of the advantages, you know, if you do like a touch screen. Now it still has button control. So if we want to move between different screens like data boxes, it has two buttons on the bottom of the unit that we press in and they move between different data boxes and a compass screen. So if I put it on some data boxes screen, on the eTrex we use a back button. So we have got a physical button to do that. So very similar in that respect, it is button control, but it's got a nice simple button that I press once, takes me straight back to the map. On the eTrex we just scroll until we get back to the map. The other thing we can do, I mentioned zooming in and out, so you can zoom in and out using buttons on the side of the unit rather than the touch screen. And also we have a nice neat button on the side that turns the screen off to save battery and turns it straight back on. So what you'll probably find with the two nav, you're using a lot of the buttons, but the certain features where on the eTrex we go into the main menu to um, stop track recording, or sorry, should I say reset trip computer, it's always recording, get to some of the features. Whereas on the two nav you are gonna be touching the screen and potentially using a start button to load a route, but it's all done by the touch screen. We've got a status bar at the top where we can scroll down and adjust things like backlight brightness. It's got um, GPS, we can check our satellite status. So there's certain things you do do via the touch screen. We go to the main menu via the touch screen and scroll up and down, but it is a nice responsive screen. Um, but it's just, if you want button only, it is gonna be the eTrex 32X that you're going to look at. Now, one of the other advantages we find with the two nav is if you want to get a route on the unit, you can do it via a computer or you can do it via a nice easy app called the Link app. Whereas with the eDrex 32, you have to put routes on. There's no connection via apps. So you have to use the USB mini cable that it's supplied with and a computer to put routes on. So you do need a computer and also to do software updates. Whereas with the two nav, software updates can be done via Wi-Fi. You can download additional maps via Wi-Fi and also you can put routes on using this link app. It does have on the back a connection for a magnetic cable, so you actually get a magnetic cable that attaches on the back, so you can connect it to a computer for putting routes on if you want to do it that way. You can actually charge it via that cable as well, that's how you actually charge the unit. But with the eTrex you are going to need a computer if you want to put routes on or for software updates. Now I mentioned downloading maps. 
One thing with the two nav, you do have to download the maps when you buy it with an ordnance survey. Um, you get it with a voucher from us and you use either Wi-Fi, so you don't need a computer or you can do it from a computer. Whereas with the Garmin, when you buy it with the US map card from ourselves, it's a map card already in the back, so there's no downloading. One of the advantages of the downloading, though, is you can put it, the maps onto more than one device. So if you own more than one two-nav device, you've actually got three activations. You can actually use those activations to put it on a phone app as well. It can be classed as one and also some software they have for a computer or if you own more than one device you've got these three activations where of course with the Garmin it's a card in the back that you, you would have to take out to put into a different unit. So I'm just going to look at loading a route just to show you what it looks like when we've got a route on the screen. So on the 2Nav I'm just going to pick a very short route that I've got in the unit and say go and that's this route on the screen. I'm just going to actually tap in and zoom in so we've got a bigger view on the screen of what that looks like and I'll just recenter that at where we are. So I'm just going to load this now on the Etrex exactly the same route. I'm just going to go to the main menu and find it. I've actually sent it to the unit as a track which is something we can still navigate with and I'm just going to select go. I'll give you an idea of one of the differences and something we do like on the 2Nav is that when we're actually following a route on it we can change the colour of the line. So I'm actually just going to zoom in on this one and that is an alert just telling me that we're off course which is a nice feature. I'm actually just going to mute the volume just so we don't get any more alerts come through while we're doing the video. So you do get alerts to say you're off course but I'm actually just going to mute that now. So on the 2Nav we've actually got the root colour here set as a white with blue lines. You can change it to lots of different colours. You can make it thicker, thinner, whereas with the Garmin, I'll just move it across, it's this pink line. We can't change it from the pink line. So it's always, I think you'll know with all Garmin handhelds, we have this pink line that is the, the root colour when you're following a route or a track. But with the 2Nav, I've got it set as the default white with the blue dashes, um, sorry, the blue outlines, should I say. But what we can do, if I actually go into the settings, just to give you an idea, and actually go into the option for our, um, what we call view, sorry, I'll just go into the, the view, and what we call navigated view, you'll see here, I've got choices of colours, so I could make it yellow, purple, all sorts of different colours. It's just telling me I've went off course again because we're not quite on the route. So you've got a nice choice of colours and what you can do when you pick a different colour, so I'll just pick the yellow there, that's me not touching on the right option. Um, it's because I'm picking the track colour, that is why. Double line colour, that's what we wanted to do. I'm going to do that as black and then I've got the double line added and I'll just go into the track colour there and I've got that one, yeah sorry, I've yellow now and I'm actually just going to make the thickness, we can actually make the line thicker. This will just give you an idea. Sorry, that was me not watching what I was doing, trying to watch the camera and touch the screen at the same time. So you can see now I've got a yellow line to follow. So you can change the colour. It could be yellow, red, any of those colours you could see. So you've got a bit more flexibility. We can also change the pointer as well. I've got it set as a red pointer showing where we are. There's various options of colour and size, whereas on your Garmin it will be that blue pointer. We can't change it. So it's just a few advantages on flexibility there on what we can do. Um, so really, two nice compact units. They both sit in the hand nicely. They're not big to carry. We know they're lightweight. Um, decent battery life on both of them. Obviously, Etrex 32X, you can put your own AA batteries in. One of the advantages and it's button controlled purely so you're never going to use a touch screen on it. To me the advantages I'm liking on the new 2Nav now are the fact we can use an app to put routes on. I like that. The other big advantage for me is changing the colour of the route. I sometimes struggle with the pink line depending on light conditions and what I'm trying to follow. So I like the fact we can actually change the colour of the route and I just think it's a bit of a brighter screen but it could be personal choice. Now bear in mind when we're sitting inside and we've not got any natural light shining on the screens, they don't look as good. When you're outside the Etrex 32, the light shining on the screen does make it a brighter screen. But I hope that's give you some ideas of what these two compact units look like side by side. So if you go to the GPS training website, www.gpstraining.co.uk, 
and under handheld devices you'll see the eTrex 32X from Garmin and you'll see the two nav rock and there's drop down boxes where you can pick the ordnance survey map options for both of the units purchased from gps training remember you do get access to all of our online training videos that cover using the units and associated software and apps free for a year as well as your email and telephone support as part of your gold support package so we hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching